Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. So, uh, Mathieu and I, we are starting our second conversation for the, for our YouTube channel, and we thought that this time we could talk about the uh, the problem of self-reference and also the uh, the the idea of how symbolism works as a series of embedded patterns one in in each other like a kind of fractal structure where the larger structure repeats itself in the in the smaller structure and how those two questions the question of self self referentiality and the question of uh, patterns embedding themselves as replicating themselves in embedded structures how they're related and and to be honest we're a bit we're a bit nervous to talk about this because the whole question of self-reference and the question of things that refer to themselves is is the kind of subject which just when you try to talk about it and when you even when you try to think about it turns your brain into a kind of mush where all of a sudden you you, you can't see clearly because of the, the the problem of of something trying to look at itself but it's a really important uh, aspect of symbolism and it, it's an important aspect of what's happening right now in the world because this this problem of self-reference is popping up more and more even in science and uh, and in culture and so so it's important to talk about it so maybe the first thing we can we can start with is the the first the, the question of how we mentioned this in our last discussion a little bit the problem of science as it stands right now is that it, it it approaches the world as if the the theory with which it's looking at the world is not part of the universe but it has to be part of the universe because i mean the universe is 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 everything and so the theory has to somehow be part of the universe but the question is how can it be at the same time part of the universe while being the thing that's looking at the universe trying to understand it and i think that consciousness really is the key to this you know and and i think that the reason why uh like jordan peterson and even people like sam harris they're trying to talk about consciousness and they're sometimes they they struggle to to fit all those things together there's an intuition that consciousness is the key because consciousness is you know is a self-referential uh, phenomena. It is the capacity that we have to to kind of, in one way, stand above ourselves and look at ourselves. But at the same time, this capacity to look at ourselves is part of ourselves as well. And so, so there's this. There is. It's as if the origin of 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 consciousness is a self-referential loop, which then moves out into the world and then becomes a coherent uh a coherent uh let's say structure of representation but it starts in this the, in the, this necessarily self-referential loop and that seems to be that that self-referential loop at the beginning of reason or at the beginning of of logic and the beginning of of a of a of a structured world seems to be the thing that 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 science or that you know kind of skeptic type people want to avoid they want to avoid the 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 inevitability of that of that that problem of, of a of a self-referential loop at the beginning of things yeah i would say this consciousness or i should say self-awareness or something like that maybe not just consciousness mm -hmm. is when you begin to include yourself in your in your model of the universe so we make models of the universe that's what we do on a regular basis I would say you become a little bit more self-aware when you uh, when you become aware of the the fact that there is a theory and there are facts or there's language and there's facts and we we when you when you get out of the system and you see this that's one kind of awareness but then I, I think there's another level of awareness where you realize that or you identify with not the language not the theory but the mediator between the theory and the fact. It, it, it's hard to explain, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's... Well, one of the things that seems to be bringing this up, and, and, and this has been interesting for me to watch, and, and I see it with, especially with what Jordan Peterson has been talking about, is, the, is using uh, biology and using uh, Darwinism as a way to show the problem of this self-referential loop, because when when using using biology and neuro neuro 
uh, psychology and and, um, and Darwinism, you have to to realize that our models of of the universe, the way we look at the universe, has to be part of that the process which made us human. It has to be a a product of of evolution or a, or a product of the of the of the manner in which we think or the manner in which we look at the world. You can't. It's like you, when you you use uh, biology or Dar Darwinism as a as a basis for the science. All of a sudden, you know, even physics has to be a product of evolution. Even mathematics has to be a product of evolution. And so there is enough. It seems like there's enough self-referential. Um, capacity for self-reference to be able to give something which looks like the, the, the traditional yeah which yeah. looks like the hierarchy of values that we find in the traditional worldview and it's so that's that's been interesting for me to watch because you know the way jordan has been presenting this hierarchy of values isn't exactly the same ontological hierarchy that we find in a traditional representation but there's enough correlation between the two to be able to say okay well you know in the bible and when we talk about god in heaven and when we talk about angels and when we talk about earth that's what we're talking about we're, we're talking about a similar type of structure which 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 is the 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 type of 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 a, of a dominance hierarchy as he uses as as uh, jordan uses that you have in darwinism and that and that 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 do that dominance hierarchy where let's say our our theory of physics would be in that dominance hierarchy and would be let's say one of the ma a, a major tool that human beings have has developed to interact with the world like that type of self referential capacity is what gives that the possibility of that hi hierarchy of values like i said like we we're saying this is stuff is really difficult to think about and difficult to talk about but it seems like that what's funny is is i'm oh, sorry go ahead no go ahead go ahead okay i was just gonna say when you think in with in traditional terms as in a traditional cosmology it's not a complicated subject at all yeah it's the most obvious thing but when you try to think of it with a lens of of science, materialism, then it becomes a really complicated thing because you're trying to, let's say, find some kind of agreement between the traditional cosmology and the materialistic one. So that's, that's what's difficult. It, it's trying to reconcile those two perspectives, really. Because when, when, you, when you begin to think in a traditional way, it's not a complicated thing at all. The idea of self-reference and the notion that the universe is a fractal is, is one of the first things that you, you encounter. Yeah. Because it's a natural, it's a natural thing. Uh, I mean, symbols are usually fractals. Okay, so maybe instead of trying, because maybe instead of trying to break through the the, yeah, the scientific, no, I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen in this conversation. At least well, we've exposed the problem. But I think maybe by giving a few examples from the traditional point of view, giving a few examples from the Bible, might be the best way for people to see how the how this works and how it elucidates not only the Bible but it also elucidates our experience of the world. So I don't know if you want to talk about. I know that in your book, one of the the major structures that you elucidate is the the relationship between the cosmic shape and the shape of the human being, and how those two are images of each other. So maybe you can go a little bit into that, knowing people we, people will be able to get all the details when your book is out. But maybe you can explain a little bit of of, of how that that would work. Yeah. Okay. I, I can try. It, it's a <laughs> difficult thing because because. Almost all of the concepts that we use today are not the same as as the ancient concepts. So it's always difficult to talk about symbolism. I, I'm still going to try, but it's always difficult because we always assume that we know the meaning of words. Yeah, and we do, but it's not. It just happens to be not the same as the ancient meaning. So I'll, when I talk about these things, I'll try to. If I realize that the words that I'm using. I'm using them in an in an ancient way. Then I'll try. Or, or if you see that I'm doing that, maybe you yeah. can. You but one can of the tell things me. you can do is at least aesthetically, let's say, like mm -hmm. at least in terms of the actual terms of the story, you can show the parallels in the terms of the story. 
so that people can see that there's clearly a, a, a relationship of structure. And then once yeah. we show that, then after that, we can we can try to explain the, the let's say the deeper meanings of those concepts. But at least people don't even see the actual pattern like they, they struggle to even see the pattern. So at least once they see the pattern, we can then try to explain it. OK, so the most the easiest to understand, I would say the the microcosm that's easiest to understand is the one you just said, um, which relates an individual to the entire universe. And when 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 we say that we're talking about the cosmos that's in the Bible, OK, not not the, the materialistic one that we have today, the mechanistic one. We're talking about the universe as described in traditional cosmology, where you have heaven and earth. And you have a mediator, which is man. Uh, when you look at it like that, and when you understand the idea that earth means factual reality, uh, physical reality, and heaven means um, ideas or theories or principles that are not uh, manifest or that are not um, concrete or practical, something like that, um, then you can start to see that individual human beings, their shape is the same as that that cosmos. And it's actually pretty obvious. It's We no longer see it that much because we no longer see the cosmos in the, in the ancient way. So we're not used to seeing those connections. But when you do, then you realize that an individual has a mind and a body. I mean, it's, it's the mind is the equivalent of heaven and the body is the equivalent of earth. And in the Bible, it's pretty clear when, when God creates Adam, and by the way, Adam means humanity. So that I think that's important to mention because that's just another example of, of uh, different that the Bible can be interpreted at different scales because the word Adam means an individual, a human. An indiv it's the name of an individual, but it also means humanity at large. Itself, right. It means so, man itself. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so humanity, something like that. So whenever there's... In the Bible, it talks about Adam in the story of Adam and Eve. It's talking about humanity at large. Yeah. And it's also talking about an individual. So that's something to be aware of. It's just an example of, of oh, but it's, microcosm. It's, it's, that, 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 that example you gave itself is an example of how it's, it's using a particular image, a particular, let's say, uh, story of a man to be the microcosm of all of humanity. And so it, even in the story itself, it's built to, to be that way. Yeah. And, then, and then the, the, the shape of, of man, let's say at the beginning of, of Genesis, when God creates heaven and earth, it says uh, God, uh, God created heaven and earth, the, the, the earth was chaos and void, and the spirit of God uh, was above the waters. And so you have this idea of spirit, and spirit is wind or breath, it's all breath. the same word. Yes, that, that's also important to say. Yeah. When it says the word spirit, it means wind. It also means breath. Yeah. Because breath is wind. Right. It, there's no difference between yeah, it's the not two. A met like what you said in the last video, it's not a metaphor. Breath is yeah. wind. Breath is actually wind. And so. And the, the only <laughs> difference, um, which is important, oh, that's another example of, of a word that, that we have to sort of redefine. The word spirit, breath, soul, all those words. They, they, they refer to the breath. It means breath. And it, it right away, if you understand that, you can see the relationship with heaven. And in the story, it says God formed Adam from the dust of the, the earth yeah. and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. So right there, you can see that it's all about joining heaven and earth. Yeah. So the breath comes from heaven and, the, and he raises some earth. And then that's man. Yeah, and that's and well, what man you said, is made from that union. And and it's exactly when you talk about the mediator, then it shows exactly that that man is the mediator because in the beginning these two things are completely separate. You have you have heaven and spirit and breath and wind above, and then you have this chaotic, uh, formless earth at the bottom, and those two things don't let's say they don't touch each other. They're 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 separate, and then then there's the creation of the different. The different strat, strat, strats of of of, uh, of creation, the heavens, and then the grass, and then it comes closer and closer and closer until you reach the human being, and then the human being has the heaven enter into the earth and joins with the earth, so that 
quite you know explicitly in the story man is that is a microcosm of, a heaven, microcosm and earth, yeah. of heaven and earth but also the mediator because he yeah. joins them together he's not just a representation of that separation but actually a representation of that union and then within man there's another microcosm which is the separation of man and woman which represents again heaven and earth which are separated you know uh, man being heaven and woman being earth but then you un united at the same time so like and then that keeps you know it's like the, the, these microcosm keep embed keep embedding themselves into each other to, to create this fractal structure that we're talking about and the bible is just full of those those fractal like structures oh yeah i just wanted to say something about also again the concept of breath maybe just talk a little bit about that because it's it's also important to understand the connection if you want to think in that way where um, the breath is related to the mind the breath is related to the intellect that's something we don't really we don't really see things like that anymore but it's a pretty obvious thing actually that your breath and your intellect are related because if you stop breathing I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend this, but stop breathing for 20 minutes, you lose consciousness. <laughs> yeah. Less than 20 minutes, I would. Yeah, I know, but I was making sure. <laughs> making so, sure that you're unconscious. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's a clear connection between breath and, and consciousness. consciousness and intellect and, and, and things of that, yeah, of that I mean, nature. I mean, you remember when we were kids, people would play that game where they would choke someone. That's a bad game. But people would, would like choke someone until they actually passed out. It was like it was like a very disturbing game that people played, but there's also yeah, so, so so the idea I, I was just just wanted to say that the idea is there is an obvious connection between heaven, air, wind, breath, intellect that we don't necessarily see anymore. But when you read the Bible, you have to understand these connections in order to understand most of the stories in the in the Bible. Yeah, and also the one of the connections between breath and intellect is through the idea of word or logos speaking. because yeah. yeah because speaking is the manifestation of intellect and speaking is words are pushed by this breath, breath. And so the breath pushes out the the sounds and so there's an uh, there's a definite there's an obvious relationship between the manifestation of intellect and and uh, and breath and you see that in the story of genesis itself again when god speaks in order to separate the the things of the world, God speaks the the, and so you have to kind of almost see this image of this breath that is above of above the earth, that and then it becomes the vehicle for God's intellect to to manifest itself and create the world. And importantly, the first words that come out of God's mouth are, <clears throat> "Let there be light." Okay, so it says the the. The breath of God or the spirit of God or the wind of God hovered over the waters and then God said with that breath, let there be light. So the light is in ancient cosmology is 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 meaning. Yeah. It represents the intellect, the meaning, the principle, the idea. So that which gives meaning to other things, that which defines things. It's it's the logos. It's the word. It's it's reason. It's logic. It's yeah. things of, things of that nature. Yeah. So, there's always there's this this verse in, in that I think it's Christ who actually says that who says the eye is the light of the of the body, and I remember you always read more boring. You always read these annoying materialists who 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 just see that as a kind of you know a kind of misunderstanding of science. Uh, you know, once again, failing to, to realize that people were just weren't materialist a thousand, two thousand years ago. To, to 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 see it rather in that sense that when you you take into account the consciousness in the scope of how the world exists, if you take into account the fact that consciousness mediates between uh, you know the the this, the potentiality of the world and then the, the the capacity for that world to have sense and have meaning, then the idea that the eye is the light is the lamp of the world makes yeah. makes total sense because the when we because look, light is not is light is meaning yeah. in, in ancient cosmology light but to look yeah. at something is to is to uh, 
separate it from the potentiality and to define make it, it to define it yeah to make it into a concrete not to make it but to participate in its in its appearance as a concrete thing right because i mean you could you could separate it into into atoms and atoms and neutron whatever and and subatomic par particles but we don't we, we it's focused it's coherent and that the con human consciousness is part of that emergent phenomena yeah so, so i think that's another yet another example of of how we have to redefine words because the definition of light today is, is again, a materialistic yeah. definition. Uh, but in the past, in ancient cosmology, it, it was not the same at all. So it's it's extremely important to re-understand the meaning of light in, in, a, in a traditional cosmology yeah. and when reading not, the Bible. Like, once again, it's not hard to do that because you all you have to do is to understand it in, in terms of phenomenology, in terms of, of how the phenomena how we interact with that phenomena. I mean, light is that which makes things visible. Like, yeah. that's what light is. It isn't, in, in a human experience, light is not a wave or a particle or, or like, you know, the, 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 the cons, you know, the, the speed of, of light is, is not, all those things are not important in the way we, we interact with it in, in our, in our everyday life. Light is that which makes things appear, like it makes them visible. It turns, like if you walk into a dark room in the, in the absolute darkness, you're going to bump into things, you're going you're gonna to not know what's there, you could die, you could fall into a hole, anything could happen. But when the light goes on, then all of a sudden things become clear and things become separate, things become unified in, in your defined, experience. Well defined, well-defined. Yes, well-defined yeah. in your experience. And so, and that's so, what light is. That's why, also, why, like you said, that's why the first thing God creates is light, because it's that it's, it's that possibility synonymous with speaking, with word, yeah. with language. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, I was thinking an example again of that man is a mediator between heaven and earth. Uh, so when God asks Adam to name the animals, that's a perfect example of being a mediator between heaven and earth. Because then what Adam has to do is take an, an abstract idea that he has and then bring it into concrete manifestation. So he names the animals according to certain ideas that he has. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. So he's like he's seeing his ideas embodied in certain beings in the world and he's, he's giving that identity to those animals. Yes. Yeah. And it's important to see it because this is one thing that people are are – our struggle with is that the idea when you say like he he has these ideas about the world people right away think oh it's relativity uh, no. subjectivity it's like no that's not it because it's because he is a mediator between heaven and earth the 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 connection between the idea and the phenomena that is appearing before him is is a unitive and a real thing like it's 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 actually the thing itself like it's the capacity to participate in the thing itself as well it's not just like he has this he has a fantasy or or, or whatever right it, it's, it's a, not just a, a whim right right it's based on it's based on his reason it's based on his intellect but That's his intellect is connected he is the connection between heaven and earth. Yeah. So he's he is the point where that those phenomena that he is encountering actually connects with their meaning. Like it's not it's not in a way like he doesn't have a choice like the way we think of choice today in naming the animals. He sees the light of his eye like the the and his word come together and participate in the the being of that of that thing that's in front of in front of, of him. Uh, it's hard to think about in such kind of direct way because we, you know, our experience of, of the world is, is, is more, is more, let's say, deluded, let's say. But we have to understand that, that the story in Genesis, Adam represents man as such in a, in a kind of pure, let's say, un, you know, untrammeled way, let's say, before the fall, we would say in Christian terms. So, Yeah. And, and it, it's related, the idea of the fall is related to losing that capacity. Yeah. So losing the capacity of correctly naming the animals or correctly perceiving the world according to its spiritual meaning. So, yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we can't imagine what that means, obviously. Yeah. And in <laughs> the Bible, like in that, that, that image is there in the, in the story because when Adam and Eve are chased from the garden, the consequences... That are that God gives to Adam and Eve are that 
like the idea that that Adam will have to work the the ground and the idea also that there will be thorns is this notion that it's as if the earth is revolting against Adam's mediating mediating principle or else he's losing his capacity to be a natural mediator and so he has to to supplement that 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 state with a with effort like yes he, he has to he has to be careful because the 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 uh the potential the the world the, the let's say the the created world becomes dangerous for him and so he has to fight it off in some ways and he has to to hold it at bay so that yeah. he can continue to play that role as mediator yeah well yeah the idea is that um well <clears throat> this this will give us other examples of, of microcosm in the bible as well the idea is that after the fall um humanity has to to correct or fix certain things artificially mm. in order for the meaning and the fact to match correctly. So, <clears throat> so for example, there's a lot of examples in the Bible. Like you said, working the ground. In the garden, Adam naturally gets food. But th this is, see, <laughs> now we, if we want to talk about these things, it, it, we have to, <laughs> again, define a lot of terms, but... That's another example of being a mediator between heaven and earth. Humans eat food. Okay, food comes from the earth. Yeah. We eat it, it becomes our body. So it's kind of a, a, a reproduction of what I said before. Um, when God created Adam, he Gathered, formed yeah. from him from the earth. Well, each time we eat, we're doing that in a way. We're, we're, we're gathering we're, the earth into ourselves. Into ourselves in a way that works because we can't just eat soil, obviously. We have to arrange the matter in a way that will, it will be able to host our intellect, our patterns, our, our ideas. So you eat certain foods that, you're, that can host your mind. That's the idea, your spirit. Mm -hmm. So not all matter can do that. And the idea is that in the garden, there was a natural way in which this happened with, with the fruits of a tree. And then once we lost that, then we, we had to fix things so that they could host meaning. So uh, the, the greatest example of that is um, the idea of building the temple. Mm -hmm. So why do they have to build a temple? Mm -hmm. Because they have to artificially um, join heaven and earth. It doesn't happen in a natural way anymore because of the fall. So now we have to arrange the facts in a way artificially so that they're able to host the identity, the breath, the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. It becomes like a body for God. Similarly, when we eat food ourselves, we have to arrange it. We cook it. We fix it. We don't eat raw meat, for example, because if we do, we might get sick. Mm -hmm. Getting sick means that it doesn't host our spirit yeah. correctly. That's what it means. So when you when you cook food and you arrange it in a way that it becomes edible, um, it's 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 this it's kind of the same thing as building a temple. It means you're arranging certain facts so that they can artificially host your 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 spirit, your mind. Yeah, and there's like a and there's a grand pattern in the Bible, like the grand story, which is which kind of embeds all these things together. And this idea is that you have this this garden at the beginning and then the fall we move away from the garden we keep moving further and further away from the garden and as we move further and further away from the garden we have to supplement that fall with artificial uh like clothing then agriculture then uh cities etc etc and in a way it's like it's straight it's like a moving away from the garden but it's also a way it's also a way to preserve the possibility of being mediator in heaven and earth yeah it's and then to it's preserve the yeah Exactly. Then at the very, very end of the whole story, this idea of this new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven, we have this idea of uh, that the final, let's say, manifestation of this whole big, 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 big pattern is a giant city, right? So an, a, a perfect city, let's say, which, which is the full supplemental thing with in the center, the garden with the tree in the middle, in the garden, in the middle, and then the whole center. So it's like, there's this whole process, this whole story in the Bible, and then at the end, there's an image of the final result of it, which kind of re-encapsulates the, the the whole story, let's say. So it's like it, that's also an example of how these patterns, 
like they they embed themselves in each other and then finally there's this final image of this 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 giant pattern of how the world exists yeah so here's another example of 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 microcosm which which is related to what what we just said so the idea of nakedness in the bible the idea of being either naked or dressed is also an example of a concept that applies to different scales of reality so when we say in the bible when it says naked it's a very deep concept but we can talk about it a little bit i don't think i'll be able to reach all of the implications here but the idea is naked means natural mm -hmm. that's what it means but that has a whole lot of implications in the bible so things are are natural when you say they're naked it means they're in their natural state so but if you think about this ancient cosmology what was the most natural state is the first day of creation before creation is this world covered with water okay that's what make the most natural thing in that cosmology is the flooded world this is a little bit strange we're not used to thinking no, of that, yeah like that's that I mean, at all. that's tough for people to, to get it but it, it's important yeah. it's really important yeah it's important because it, with that idea you can understand a lot of the of the symbolism in the bible so the most natural state is this state of cyclical reality which is the first day of creation where everything is fluid and that goes with the idea that things haven't been differentiated yet right everything is connected in a fluid way things aren't distinct so <clears throat> when it talks about being naked it's it's related to that idea mm -hmm. okay so this is why also in the in in the story of uh, of adam and eve it says the snake was the most shrewd beast of the field yeah. okay but the word shrewd naked. means naked yeah. okay but then when you understand the idea that naked in the bible refers to the most natural state then you can understand why the snake is naked okay because the snake is is like this fluid being He's like the water at the beginning. Naked means natural. It, it's it's like the most primitive state. Now, there's nothing wrong with nakedness until the fall. Yeah. Because things were naturally mediated correctly. That's the idea of, of the fall. And then when there's the fall, it means Adam and Eve tried to eat something they couldn't handle. That means they tried to take facts into their include facts that they didn't know what to name how to explain with their theories that's really what it means so when you eat something that you can't handle it that's that's the miniature version of a bigger picture where you see things that you don't know how to name you yeah. can't name you can't identify yeah and that has something to do why when jordan peterson is always talking about this 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 kind of entry into chaos where you know you you face something which disrupts you what you know it's like and all of a sudden you you don't know like he talks often about this idea that you know you find out that your spouse has been cheating on you for 10 years and so that 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 like cr that hitting of of a, of of a fact or a, something that you can't handle you know throws your whole world up into upheaval and it's like everything is on the verge of of a, of, of falling apart and so then you have to you have to work at putting things together like you have to yeah. it's like it, it needs the work to to bring things back you have to, to fix things yeah exactly you have to fix things make them fit your mind again make yeah. them fit your your plans let's say you have plans yeah something happens that isn't part of your plan and you don't know what to do with yeah. it 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 makes you wander yeah it could okay? be anything your car breaks yeah. down you're driving to you're driving on a trip your car breaks down all of a sudden you have to change your plans. If you don't, you're going to wander and be in absolute chaos. You have to work to rearrange things so that it can yeah. fit what you what you're trying to do, or or that it can lead to something that's that that isn't just absolute, you know, nothingness, right? Yeah. So the idea the idea of nakedness and dressed, it has a cosmic meaning and it has an individual meaning. So the idea is that. Things are either in a natural state or they're artificially fixed to make them work, to make them to make your theories match the facts. So mm -hmm. this happens at the individual level. I mean, you have an idea, you have a plan, but maybe your body, your passions or, or whatever, don't cooperate. Yeah. 
So you want to do something, but let's say you're lazy. That's, yeah, exactly. your, that's your body telling yeah. you, no, sorry, I don't agree with your plans. I'm not going to follow along. So you have to force, artificially force yourself to do certain things. <clears throat> so that, that's what it means to be dressed in the Bible. Mm. And, and clothing itself is an example <laughs> of that. So again, it's not, it's not about having metaphors. The idea of clothing, that's what clothing is for, ultimately. Mm. It's, it's to correct your, your passions, okay? It's to give your, your head, your mind, your, your, your um, things that have a purpose to give them dominance over your body. Yeah, because so, you, you know you're, you're cold, so it's, that's an example. Let's say you're cold, and so you wear clothing so that you're not cold. Also, you, if, let's say you, you, everybody was naked, and all of a sudden, you know, your desires would be... Yeah, there would be problems. ...would be always be away, awakened, and so to clothe them is to be able to manage those desires so that you can do something else besides being completely taken over by those, by those, by those types of, of, of thoughts and, and, and such. Yeah, so, so here's another example of, again, of seeing it as, as at different scales. So you can say, for example, um, so clothing, when, we, when it talks about dressing in the Bible, um, another example, if you look at it at a slightly bigger scale, so uh, at a social scale, let's say, uh, at, a, at the scale of a society, well, you have the same idea. You have... Um, some individuals that are the head of that society, they're the leaders, they make the laws, they, they make sure that the laws are followed, and then you have a population. So the idea is in order dressing, dressing this, this society would mean making laws and forcing people to follow the laws. Like jail, for example, is an example of clothing, but mm -hmm. not at the scale of the individual, at the scale of a society. So you make some laws, people don't naturally follow those laws necessarily. So what do you have to do? You have to fix the population so that it follows your laws. So when you put people in jail, that is the equivalent of dressing yourself. Right, an extreme yourself. version of dressing. Yeah, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's only extreme because it's a bigger scale. It's at a social level, right? You look at it at a bigger scale. It always, it's always more extreme. I mean, if we, if we, if we were at the scale of our body parts and we saw that what dressing did, we would probably find it extreme. But we're not. So, <laughs> so, so now here's an example. Here's another example also of different scales. So, um, these are these are very complicated subjects, but <laughs> we're, we're going to try anyway. Um, so at the individual scale, we're, we're talking about eating before, taking in matter into your body. So that same concept exists at a slightly bigger scale, which is the scale of a society. A society or a civilization eats, but what does it eat? It eats people. It looks crazy to say, it doesn't literally eat people with the teeth, but the, the society is a being and it integrates more individuals. Mm -hmm. So when somebody is integrated into a society, that's a larger scale version of an individual eating food, and that's yeah. very important in yeah. the Bible. And the way it, the way it eats people, let's say to, to to not make it sound crazy, is 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 that it integrates their work, it integrates yeah. their businesses, it integrates their tax money, it integrates you know their their children, and uh, yeah. and 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 it also makes them part. It makes those gives people, them an identity. Yeah, and and gives them exactly that's what I was gonna say. And it laws. makes them participate in the identity of the city or of the nation or of the, the, the group, whatever that is. It gives them, it says you're part of this group and that and your exchange, like your trade for that, is that you give me your your strength, your work, your 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 services so that we all participate in this unity, like this this unity. So yeah, it's a perfect example of, of, of that ha appearing at different scales. And it's actually exactly the same thing that we do when we eat food. Because Food is, is matter. We eat it. It becomes our body. What does that mean, become our body? It means now you will follow the laws of this, this being, the laws. Mm -hmm. So my hand used to be a sandwich. It's, it's not a metaphor. I mean, I ate a sandwich. It became my flesh. Now this flesh follows the instructions of my head. It follows the laws. It follows my identity. Yeah. 
it doesn't follow its only its its natural state yeah. anymore. It's it again. There is no metaphor in there at all. Yeah. So at a bigger scale, individuals are eaten by a society. It means they're integrated into that body at the con and on the condition that they follow the the laws of that mm -hmm. society. Yeah. They follow the rules. So that's like. The sandwich becoming my flesh and following the laws of my head. Yeah, it's, exactly. it, it's, it's just at a slightly bigger scale. Yeah. So what does it mean to dress the body at the individual level? It means put clothing on, but it also means to force my body to some degree to do certain things that it naturally wouldn't. Yeah. Because like I said, you could be either be lazy or you could have too much energy or something like that and you have to restrain yourself. So in a society, same thing. There are certain rules that are there just to restrain artificially make the body coherent yeah, yeah. And so i think so, I, I think that, that that if we try to come back slightly to our our beginning point which was talking a little bit about let's say the way the, the place where thought is today and and the and the like the questions that scientists and, and and those types of thinkers are asking themselves i think that we can come to this notion of this concept of emergence which has been kind of a buzzword uh, for the past, you know, ten years or whatever, I don't remember exactly when it started, but but this idea that that these these patterned beings appear at different levels of of manifestation, you know, like an individual, a city, then the yeah. cosmos and, and planetary systems and all that, that in fact, and, and the struggle scientist types have in in accounting for that for that that jump in different levels of manifestation. Well, I think that we can. We can say that the, that the key is consciousness, like it has to be consciousness uh, and that that taking into account the the self the the, the self-referential loop at the beginning. Right. The, the, the self-referential loop of of self-awareness and consciousness is and in, in including the fact that we are the ones looking at these phenomena into the system is going to be the only way to get out of this dilemma. One of the things that I want to do in these YouTube channels, and hopefully we can do it together as well, is maybe sometimes take particular stories or particular, you know, laws in the Bible and then just show people how the, those that fractal structure of symbolism, how these patterns embed themselves in each other and how really almost all like, let's say all of them even are just a repetition of that very first story in in genesis of of the creation story where heaven and earth are separate and then united in in the human being that that all the stories are just kind of these repetitions of the same pattern in different ways yeah. at different scales with different variables but just kind of repeat the same and, and fit into each other yeah yeah the story of the garden of eden is the is the ultimate pattern of everything it, yeah. it's it's meant to explain everything well there isn't a solution to the it's meant to explain the problem that we're in. Well, I would say the solution is probably <laughs> in the story? It's Christ. I think that solution yeah. is the story yeah, of Christ. But it's but, not in the story of Adam and Eve. No, that's what I'm we'll, saying. Yeah, we'll get there at some point. Start talking about how the story of Christ is like almost a is this answer, like constant answer to the to the the uh, the dilemmas and the the openings that are proposed in in uh, in, in in Genesis. How yeah. how his story kind of unites everything together. Let's say. So, but, but we need to kind of move through it slowly so that people can can understand it when we talk about it. Okay. Well, I think that I think that we've got some good stuff, and so this is what we're this is what we have until until your book is ready and people can dive into it in more detail. And so, yeah. So we'll 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 talk more and see if there's other you know examples that we can that we can bring up and maybe go into certain stories together one of the things i like to do maybe in the future with you is is i want to, to talk about the story of of tamar which you talked about in uh in the video with jordan peterson because i think a lot of people they would i think that 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 it, that story is really difficult but i think that if you can understand that story uh you can understand a lot of things that are happening right now in, in our society so it'd be interesting to talk about yeah, it's all, it's it's often a question of re redefining the terms again. That's why it's so difficult to talk about symbolism today. Things that used to be absolutely obvious in the past have become extremely difficult to understand today because we we don't have the same perspective at all. Yeah. So luckily, all we, luckily we still have our everyday experience, which we can use as a 
as a base for for understanding symbolism. So so hopefully we can get people to 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 get back into their into the more primordial experience of of, of their body and their everyday life, which is the which is a good way to start at least. Yeah. All right. So so well, everybody will see you very soon. Bye bye. If you enjoyed this content and our exploration of symbolism, get involved. I love to read your comments in the comments section below. Please go ahead and share this on social media to all your friends. And also, please consider supporting us financially on Patreon. You'll find the link to the Patreon page in the description below.